Hello again, this is Dougal, and with me today is Link, the creator of UBE, or U-Boat Expanded. Sir, and everybody, hey. Link agreed to let me host this interview so we could talk about his very ambitious mod and try to help other players understand the massive scope of UBE and just what exactly it adds to the game. In this video, I have some slides taken from his mod page on Steam, but I'll also be showing some vanilla gameplay. So we'll have a base to work from and to show the differences in stock U-Boat and U-Boat Expanded. So Link, why don't you start by telling us when you first got into modding for U-Boat? Yeah, um, so I, I bought the game about a year and a half ago. Shortly after that, I think the developers had opened up the workshop and uh, I was told by a fellow community member, you know, hey, this game utilizes Excel files and easy to mod. Um, and basically, right after they opened the workshop, uh, I started uh, looking into kind of how you could interact with the game and interact with the data. So basically from the beginning. Have you, have you ever modded any games before this? No, uh, this is my first attempt and really my first rodeo with doing this kind of work. So it's a very new experience to me. Uh, what was the very first mod you put up on the Steam Workshop for you, Boat? Uh, so I I'd started pretty simple. Um, I had worked on a kind of a collection of three mods, uh, and it was the first thing that I kind of saw in, you know, playing the game in, in the vanilla style. That kind of didn't really irk me, but it just I, I felt like there needed to be more, and and it was uh, the crew names seemed very repetitive. Um, you know the ship names you'd play through, and I was like, I've seen that ship name before. I've seen that ship. You know, I think I sunk it, um, and, and things like that. Just really simple kind of little gimmicks. And so the first mod I worked on was uh, injecting more data into the game for those two specific aspects, uh, ships and crew member names. Yeah, I noticed uh, a lot of brothers on my sub. <laughs> got the Vogel yeah. brothers, got the Keller brothers, quite a few uh, people related to each other on that boat. Yeah, it was early on, I mean, back in what, B126 and 127, uh, it, was, it was a lot of the same names being utilized in the crew. And I'll be honest with you, I don't really pay too much attention to the ship names, but that's still a really nice detail. I'm sure a lot of people appreciate that. Yeah, so with the ship names, I mean, you don't, I think it's expanded, they've expanded the list name a little bit, but um, during the beginning, you know, you'd see uh, Liberty this, Liberty that, or Empire this, Empire that, and... You know, at first glance, you know, it's nice. You play the game for a few hours and you don't really notice it. Um, and, you know, you might go a year doing patrols and you don't really mind. Um, it was only until I actually recognized one of the ship names. I, I don't recall now what it was, but I just kind of recognized it. And when I saw it twice, I was like, okay, why is that? Or is that accurate? And kind of how, like, how hey, much work did minute. the devs put into it? Hey, wait a minute. Didn't I sink you? Yeah, and... So that was kind of the start of me developing this kind of data injection. Okay. Uh, well, we got the slide up now. Let's talk about some of the other mods, some of your earlier mods that you've now incorporated into this mega mod. Yeah. Um, so this is... These are basically, this list is the list of the original mods that I developed before I even did use Boat Expanded or any of the other expanded mods. Um, Ports Expanded and Crew Names and Ship Names were the, really the first kind of work that I did. Um, and they, each one developed after the next, so it was kind of like a, a natural progression of the work that I was trying to do. Um, you know, I, I built the ship names and that felt great, you know, taking, we'll get into this, but taking historical data and filling in huge amounts of vessel names for the game to utilize and huge amounts of, you know, German crew names for me to utilize. Uh, Ports Expanded was 
kind of my first attempt at making the map feel more whole. Um, it felt very empty uh, when I first started playing. You know, it, it, it was fine at first, but then I, I quickly realized that there's more to Europe, there's more to North America and South America and Africa, uh, you know, these coastal regions that U-boats patrolled. And I really started diving into, you know, what can I do to maybe build upon this? Limited number of allied ports, limited number of neutral ports, limited number of German ports. Yeah. Um, and, you know, ports expanded really by itself didn't do much. It just added an icon um, into the game that said, hey, a port exists here. In in reality, if you actually went there in the game, you know, nothing would be there. Uh, um, and uh, I kind of quickly started going into uh, expanded shipping lanes. You know, I wanted to see more ships and in areas that the base game didn't have. Um, this was kind of like in Norway and in the Mediterranean um, and transatlantic. So I just kind of started very slowly adding things in. Um, and that really quickly, you know, once I found the ease of kind of doing this process of like how to add new data, um, it really quickly took a life of its own and the scope of what I was doing um, really blew up. Started to get easier and easier, but as it got easier, it also became larger and larger, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, at, at first it was, I mean, I think I added maybe 10, 10 ports, uh, maybe 15 just in places that I felt that could use a, an additional location. Um, the expanded U-boat, oh yeah, the expanded U-boat roster, I totally forgot about that one. Um, and once I figured out, you know, you can quickly add this, I was like, all right, I, I don't, I don't know, you know, enough to really add this data in myself. I, you know, sometimes I'd guess, uh, or just kind of do what felt right. Um, but then I was kind of like, you know, if I'm going to publish these to the workshop, which I was starting to do, um, I really felt like I should be accurate to, you know, history and provide players, you know, data that's, you know, valid. Um, you know, I, I and it was kind of this interesting, you know, which route do I want to go for? Do I want to just go for what's fun and, you know, it's the craziest thing I can do? Or do I want to, like, try and make a representation of what was historically accurate and what historically occurred or so, existed? So up to that point, you were doing it all manually, manually adding each line of data. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, it was it was a painful painful process of doing one line at a time you know maybe a few loading the game the game would error out not load and uh it was really just on me and my own creativity to kind of determine what i was adding uh but that quickly evolved into i basically started using google and doing research and looking for information on World War II and, you know, what were the major battles and what were the, you know, what were these convoys that people talk about? And I really quickly stumbled upon uh, a few great repositories and, you know, the community is probably familiar with them now, or at least some of the community is familiar. Um, I stumbled on uboat.net and uh, a place called Arnold, uh, I'm going to butcher his name, Hogs Database, Convoy Database. Um, and a few other kind of uh, historical archive sites that just had a huge, huge plethora of information. I mean, just vast arrays of exceptionally detailed information that has been compiled and built from uh, World War II veterans and, and people that had actually served in, in Germany and the U.S. and Canada and, all, and Britain um, and had done the diligence of creating these this vast array of information and knowledge to record what they knew and, and what happened and and that's when i really realized okay there's all this information like i you know it could be brought into the game it can be added and that made things a lot easier you you found a way of just injecting the raw data into the game yeah, it was, I mean, it, I wish it was that simple. I found a way to inject raw data. Um, yeah, I found a way. I, I, it, 
it was not a one two step process it was a long evolution but uh it started as you know how do i just get the data out of these archives how do i you know take the information that i need and want uh, to use and put it into basically excel format um huge excel tables uh and so there was this process of you know what they call ripping or html or basically parsing through these websites and uh via scripts and sometimes via manual work me just sitting there and reading and copying and pasting into files um, and however i did it it was just getting the data into you know a workable usable format uh, from that it was really just trying to figure out, you know, how do I take all this data? And I think before I even created a lot of these mods, I probably had, you know, two or three gigabytes worth of textual you know, image-based data that I was going to sift through to try and create usable data sheets for Yubo. Um, and that's where the long journey of kind of compiling, scripting, and using just ridiculous methods to try and get this into a format that the game could utilize all right we'll come we'll touch back on that for a bit i wanted to get into uh, some of the live game footage here and show everybody vanilla so we had no I, so we have an idea of what we're working with here so this is the base game uh i'm only running a few mods like the tdc mod compass navigation mod everything else is vanilla including uh all of the, the vanilla ports and the shipping lanes. So over in the Americas, we have the two Canadian ports, Port of Sydney and Halifax, Port of Boston, and the Port of New York and New Jersey. And that's pretty much it for the Americas. Nothing on South America, nothing in the Caribbean. That's it. Uh, if we come over here to the main European area. We have the UK, Linnaeus, Leith, Belfast, Liverpool, Cardiff, and Portsmouth. Now, um, come to think of it, Link, uh, I've only ever seen shipping coming in and out of Liverpool in vanilla. Yeah. Is, it, is that a thing? Uh, the, the base game and, and if I recall correctly, and of course I may be a little bit inaccurate, but if I recall correctly, the base game actually only utilizes, I think, two British ports for destinations. Destinations and origins. Cause there's also shipping coming out of the UK. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty light. I mean, obviously they've, they've got a good baseline, but it's, there's only a few ports that are actually utilized to generate those, uh, convoys and transports. We know one of them is Liverpool. Uh, do you know what the other one is? I believe it's Belfast. Okay, so Belfast in the Irish Sea. And then Liverpool in... I don't know what this area is called. I wish they should label more of these, in my opinion. A mod might be created one day. Because I've also noticed they don't even label the Strait of Gibraltar. But that's famous. That is an absolutely famous strait, a famous passage uh, for the U-boat wars in World War II. Basically suicide to run a U-boat through here. Uh, now we also have the playable ports, Bergen, Kiel, Wilhelmshaven, La Rochelle, and La Spezia. That's it, right, for the playable ports? In yeah, vanilla? I, I believe so. Okay. And in the base game, at some point, I think it's generated by time and date, uh, a mission will become available where you can change flotillas. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, after, I think the base game starts in early 1941. Mm. Uh, and January as you play... of 1941, if you're on the U-96... February of 1941, if you're on the U-552. Yeah, and, uh, you know, as you do patrols, there's a uh, chance that you may be offered a joint flotilla to Bergen or uh, you know, down to Love Shell. So 
but it's pretty limited. I mean, it's it's the chance of getting some of these missions is really low, and I think there's development aspects that were considered for that, you know, for testing. And, of course, it's a sandbox. Uh, when we actually get a full-fledged campaign, uh, I imagine, this is an assumption, but I imagine that uh, there might be a lot of scripted events, including scripted changing of ports. Yeah, I think I think there's going to be a, a big overhaul in how the game, and a campaign, or even the sandbox kind of works. Right now, it seems like a very early implementation and, and it gets the job done for what they need for a sandbox, but... And allows us to test the core features. Exactly. Um, but these playable ports also generate, in a, in a manner of speaking, they generate convoys of their own, right? But in the form of U-boats. Yeah, so right now all the, the German-occupied uh, ports, all they do, and it's actually not even all of them, I think it's uh, predominantly Wil Wilhelm, that generate the U-boat patrols. Um, and it's pretty simple in how they do it. Um, they It just puts out an activity modifier that you know, says, hey, make five U-boats spawn every you know, five or 10 days um, and just send them to these grids. And so the way the game handles that is it says, hey, allow U-boats to go to grid AM, go to grid AN, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And you'll see in the game that U-boats, NPC U-boats will uh, kind of just patrol out. And as they interact with other NPC convoys and transports, they'll try and go off and attack them. And they might end up dying themselves. Yeah. And so it's it's an interesting seeing how the, the NPCs and the AI in the game kind of handle this, uh, this spawner data and... You know, once once you spawn something, uh, you can give some basic instructions like, hey, this is kind of what I want you to do. Um, but once the game actually starts playing and the, these, you know, ships go out, um, it's interesting to see actually, actually see how it plays out because U-boats will diverge and track a convoy for however long attacking it. Well, uh, Laraki... Link had just updated his UBE mod, uh, what was it, a week ago? Actually, the yeah, so a week ago I just released a major patch for uh, how missions are handled and developed in the mod. Um, and right now we're kind of in this patch, uh, quick succession of patches this last week to kind of ensure stability, make sure there's not errors. And we actually had an error earlier this week that I resolved today i released a patch today that should resolve some of those mission issues but yeah we just released 0 0.5 uh, it's on 0 0.53 alpha um we're disregarding why it's called that um that should be currently the stable version on the workshop i want to talk more about that about missions uh in a little bit as we progress through the video but uh don't let me forget isomorphic algorithms isos from the movie Tron, right? Yeah. Okay, so SVG one SVG SV underscore cheats activated. Uh, so right now we can see everything, everything. These are all of the vanilla convoys and shipping lanes in the game. Here's all of our U-boats. Looks like a lot of U-boats are coming out of Bergen, perhaps. Wilhelm's Haven. I imagine that the game wouldn't want to spawn many U-boats out of Kiel because the U-boats would be spending so much time circumnavigating all of this crap just to get back into the North Sea. That's just my thought. Um, sure enough, it looks like there's a battleship there. Look at that. That is the BB transport. I believe that was a local transport between Belfast and Cardiff. Really? I thought BB was short for battleship. I'm thinking of B World of Warships. Oh, uh, yeah, you, you are. And, uh, and uh, I can imagine a lot of people, you know, see these and they have their own ideas. There is actually a extensive list of convoy codes. And so what you're seeing there, BB is a convoy code. Um, 
and during World War II, there was a large list of different convoy codes, and they represented, you know, origin and destination kind of waypoints. Um, and you can and BB, BA, you know, BC. These are all different types of convoy codes. Fair enough. Um, yeah, uh, I know that uh, HX is coming from Halifax and heading for Liverpool. SC convoys are, I believe, from Sydney heading to Liverpool. But, moving on, uh, yeah, we can see that a large portion of the shipping is coming from these two ports in Canada, Sydney and Halifax. Heading over to the UK, and of course some shipping heading back from the UK because they delivered their goods, and now they need to head back. Of course, Convoys aren't one-way trips. They eventually have to go back, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a, the, I think the game kind of states, you know, A, send ships in this direction to this destination, and then the exact opposite of that, go right back. And if the convoy and, and, doesn't make it, will the game still spawn another convoy from the, from the place that they were going? Yeah, so um, those convoys, as they transit... Um, they can U-boat patrols can actually detect them, and they will chase, literally chase these convoys as Here's they an example move right through here. the map. Yeah, and uh, as far as there is logic in the game, and you can actually see this happen um, in some cases when you're loading up a game. The game will actually calculate kind of, hey, what's happening with this interaction between these two, this U-boat and this transport, and it'll say, hey. Uh, the U-boat won a battle and it sunk a ship out of this convoy or U-boat lost a battle and it was sunk itself. Um, so there is kind of attrition of these convoys, but you'll never see like a convoy in its entirety get wiped off the map by one NPC U-boat. At least I don't think you... It might, it might hurt my computer, but I'm going to... Oh yeah, you can, you can see the feed on Discord still, right? Yes, sir. Okay, good, yeah. So, yeah, we have, uh, looks like two U-boats engaging two different convoys. One looks like it's going after this OG convoy. And one is going after this smaller transport. And so, when a convoy reaches a destination, it disappears from the map, right? I wish that was the case. Um, when a convoy reaches its destination, it will... It, so... In the, the base game, and it works pretty well in most cases, and we'll talk about some of the bugs that kind of happen with this, uh, a convoy will actually place the ships that reach its destination into the dock of the destination port. Um, and so you'll actually see if a dock has no ships in it and a convoy arrives there, uh, those ships will actually dock, and you can uh, see the same ship that you saw in a convoy actually placed in the docking ports of you know, Cardiff. That's for pretty cool, actually. They'll actually moor themselves to the dock. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, that process is imperfect, but in, in, a, in most cases, that's the kind of interaction that happens in the game. Um, I don't know if the, the opposite is true, but it definitely is for receiving ships. But again, so what happens if the sh convoy doesn't reach the port? Well, well, let me back it up. So if a convoy reaches a port, they moor themselves to the port in some cases. And then when they're finished, they leave? Yeah, or they do they despawn. Uh, they do despawn. Um, they usually they despawn when another convoy. So you might have OG, you might have two or three OG convoys uh, heading into Gibraltar. Um, when the first one arrives, it'll moor all those ships, or as many as it can, because there's a limited amount of placement that it has available at the port. Um, it'll moor whatever ships it can to the docking plate uh, ports, um, to the docks at the port. And then if another convoy comes in, basically it'll just either despawn anything that can't be placed or replace uh, any existing ships. So and it's it's kind of a balance. And what happens when they're ready to leave, or do they leave? Does it just spawn new convoys, or does it try to use the convoys that arrived? Yeah, so when leaving, I think it's a fresh spawn of ships and entities leaving the port. It actually doesn't call back from what's in port right then um, to leave. Okay, but that sounds like it's a good way of saving assets, while also maintaining 
a constant supply of shipping in the world. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of systems that go into this. I mean, we're we're covering it in a very simple, you know, kind of how does it look from a gameplay perspective? Um, there's a lot that goes into it, and in, you know, managing, you know, what countries have what equipment and ships available to it at the time, and so there's a lot of complexity that just that goes behind that, and it's it's actually very well thought out by the devs. Um, they really built a uh, really good system for kind of handling this, you know, production of ships, the spawning of ships, and the movement of ships from one location to another. Um, and uh, the game, I think, once it's fully developed and complete for, like, a campaign, you're really going to see some interesting functionality, I think, that the devs are planning. I can't tell for certain, but from what is built in, it seems very capable. You'd have to be a pretty smart man, though, to, to pick all of that apart and then add to it the way that you have. Smart and maybe uh, a little bit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the Americas. Uh, it looks like some transports are heading north. Now, I, I know that they did this in real life in World War II. They didn't always take a straight line from point A to point B because that made them easier to intercept. Some of them would put some uh, deviation in their course. They would head a little bit north of the track or a little bit south of the track on their way to the UK, I believe. Yeah. So um, there was two different types of shipping that kind of occurred in World War II during this time, uh, depending on the year and time frame and area. Um, there was independent shipping that remained separated from you know, the military kind of organized convoy routes, and then there was the convoy routes. So convoy routes were one of great interest to Germany and uh, Italy during their period uh, in the Mediterranean uh, to intercept. And so what you'll see is that convoys take kind of very diverging routes, and depending on the year in the game, those routes may change. Um, I think OS is one of those convoys that kind of at one point goes north, way north, and other period of time it actually shifts south. and these routes are, you know, determined actually in, back then were determined literally weeks, if not days prior to the original leaving of those ships from a port. They would hand out the orders uh, just prior and that was the course that the captains would set. And sometimes they wouldn't even know the course until the lead flagship would actually yes. tell them, hey, we're doing this. Yes, so I it was actually, just one ship. I actually have that as my BRB screen. Let me... Uh... There you go. <laughs> Based on, uh, found it on Google Images, and my friend uh, modified it a bit, and then I injected it into my Be Right Back looping animation. Uh, somebody tweeted, loose lips, shink ships, don't tell anyone about your convoy before leaving port. Yeah, there it is. So the information so, is very hush-hush. Yeah, and... and because was, because because before your before your convoy even leaves port, uh, a spy or a bad actor, you know, in America in Canada could radio that information ahead to Germany, and they could send the appropriate U-boats out to the area to intercept that convoy. Exactly, and a lot of these convoys were you know multinational, uh, you know, freighters and shipping vessels that came from all across the world to partake in this and so you never know you know is it this you know one ship is it someone at port there's huge risks uh involved in this kind of large effort of movement of goods i noticed a on convoy and some ob convoys down here yeah so i think the base game has a total of 12 Maybe, maybe more, but I, no more than, I'm pretty sure no more than 12 unique major convoys. SL, I game. know that one. SL is Sierra Leone. Yes, sir. Here we go, Sierra Leone. Um, so yeah, these are all the base ports in game, as you can see. We have the Mediterranean, we have the Port of Alexandria, Grand Harbor, and you can see shipping coming in and out of there. Let's fast forward time to see who's going where. Looks like all of these guys are actually eastbound into the Mediterranean to deliver to the port of Alexandria.
it's so cool watching these work. Oh no, let's get that back. Thank you. OG Convoy is probably heading to Gibraltar, I'm guessing. That is correct. And one of the other things you'll notice is uh, warship groups. Uh, that's another Hunting nice parties. little addition. Yeah. Um, the, the base game utilizes them, but I don't think they're you know, fully implemented. I think the devs are aware, and I've made them aware of some issues with warships, but they do exist. They do interact uh, with the game. They're also a really nice touch uh, to gameplay. You know, obviously hunting convoys is the main aspect of the game, but running into a warship group with your U-boat, oh man, that is a stressful encounter. Well, I imagine one of the things we're all hoping for is uh, some German, German shipping, German warship parties and Ger uh, German uh, aircraft patrols. Yeah, that that's something that I think really the game needs, uh, you know, more than just U-boats leaving the harbor. Now, I know Living U-Boat, I think it was, tried to add German shipping and German warships to the game. Does U-Boat Expanded add any of that? Yeah, um, just the Living U-Boat, actually, when... U-Boat Expander was first created. Uh, me and the creator of Living U-Boat kind of were working together in building these mods. U-Boat, um, Living U-Boat, we actually, I actually provided a lot of the initial data that I had created early on. Uh, I forget the author's name. I can't pronounce it. I think it's Wangsy. Um But we kind of collaborated at first just to get each other going. And after that we diverged but we both kind of said hey you know we want to see german shipping we want to see you know more warship groups and all, all these kind of things that we felt that were missing um and after that we kind of went our separate ways and how we developed uh, obviously our intentions were different um but we both developed great mod or well, what i think are great two great mods um and that was yeah um german warships german shipping aircraft um, Norwegian warships, American warships, and submarines. Um, these are all kind of things that are easily, somewhat easily implemented into the game and really add a lot of kind of historical value as well as uh, realism to, you know, the European theater. Agreed. Also makes it feel a little less lonely out there. Yeah, I mean, and I think that's, I mean, the base game you get the impression that it's you, you're a German submarine and it's Britain, you know, it's predominantly Britain that you are going against. And, and for the most part, that is true. Um, but in reality, you know, if you were to go back in time, and participate in <laughs> just an ant, you know, fly on the wall, the, the, the amount of other traffic and other things happening in the world, other shipping lanes between other countries and interactions that were happening between, you know, uh, uh, territorial disputes and, the United States has entered the chat. Brazil has entered the chat. Portugal has yeah, entered the chat. <laughs> exactly, exactly. This is a, a huge multinational kind of and, and you know events taking place throughout all of the world. I mean, it is, it's not just around Britain and Europe. I mean, it's in the Pacific. It's in Africa. It's in you know all throughout Africa and the Mediterranean. Um, so, th and that's really kind of what I wanted to show is. You know, as we're doing this, you know, I want I wanted to see where are all the Nor Norwegian ships. You know, where is uh, you know Portugal and you know, you know uh, I I agree with you, but I I admit when I first t tested out your mod, I got a little overwhelmed because I was using uh, no ship icons and the better map mod, and I ran into a convoy, a multinational convoy with a lot of flags I didn't recognize, and because of the mods I was using, I had no idea who was a valid target or not. Yeah, so I can um, understand. I can understand. I'm not sure if the devs did this on purpose, but I can understand simplifying it for the sake of the player, dum dums like me, who uh, only can recognize a few flags at a time, such as the British flag, Norwegian flag, and American flags. Yeah, and and I mean, for again, for what the sandbox was, you know, um, and, and the simplicity that was good enough, um, but the systems are there to add additional countries, add additional flags. And um, I, I quickly realized, you know, I was developing and getting response from players and a lot of the mod users, which I can't thank them enough for the feedback that they provide on 
my work because there are some things I'll just go out and make and I'll think it's perfect. I'll be like, yeah, that's that's exactly what I wanted. And then I'll get 50 comments like, hey, I can't identify half these ships, so I don't know how to identify these. And just recently, actually, with this most recent version of U-Boat Expanded, I provided not only within the game files, uh, but a link on the workshop to a very basic kind of work in progress uh, flag identification book. It's a PDF book. It's not in the game necessarily, but it's something that the player can utilize and, and refer reference. to. Yeah. Is it also to, dated so you can players can know when that target joined the yeah. US? It's it's not at the moment, and that that was something I, you know, initially considered, um, but for the time being, it was it was, but just a flag. it's also it's also possible to add in radio messages to the game from BDU, right? That yeah. can let the player know, hey, by the way, these are your new standing orders. It is you are now free to attack Norway. Yeah, and that was my initial that was actually exactly my initial plan of action for kind of informing the player of these political changes and diplomatic changes between countries was i i there's a separate mod out there um, it's partially integrated into u-boat expanded uh, but it's called radio expanded it's right now it's separate from this main mod for good reason um, but was to provide radio messages on the historical date that a or declaration occurred with either Germany or another country so that you know you as a player can get a message that says hey you know this country is now you're now at war with you have the permission to engage so uh, that was a very streamlined and kind of uh, natural way to kind of provide that detail to the player you know on a side note before moving on uh, I think it is actually a good idea to keep some mods separate from the main mod so that the uh, player can like kind of like old country buffet pick and choose what they want to build their pack with yeah and that's that's exactly that's actually the only and primary reason why I have all of these sub mods uh, and when I say sub mods like a child mod or the, the part of U-Boat Expanded that makes up U-Boat Expanded I keep those on the workshop for the exact purpose um, they aren't updated as frequently as you put expanded but they periodically get synced up and what that allows a player to do is they say hey you know i don't want this specific aspect like maybe i just want the ports and i want the ship names and you know the the crew names but i want to use let's say living u-boat or a new mod that modifies the sandbox uh, whatever kind of pick and choose they want to do. They don't want the full U-Boat Expanded experience, maybe the missions or whatever, but they can do that. And so that's how I deploy my mods to the workshop so that players can either go with the fully developed you know, U-Boat Expanded or kind of piecemeal what they want. Okay. Uh, so just as kind of a reminder before I drop the game, we move on to different subjects, and I actually load up the game with UBE running. So, of course, this is vanilla we're looking at. The vanilla ports and the vanilla shipping lanes. Primarily, Canada, with some shipping out of Boston? Perhaps? Not sure? Uh, there is later in the game, I think in uh, 43, 44, there are... Ah, when USA joins the fight. Makes yeah. sense. Uh, lots of shipping out of Canada, but, of course, also shipping out of Gibraltar and from the ports in the Mediterranean as well as the final port down near Freetown. Now, uh, Sierra Leone. Um, now, the game's default patrols, and we'll talk about that as well, the game's default patrol missions that are available to the player will put them near or directly on top of these shipping lanes, correct? I know I've seen patrol missions available that put you down smack dab in the middle of the Celtic Sea, or in this channel right here uh, between Liverpool and... Belfast. Yeah, the the base game has uh, basically defines uh, a, sh a short list of regions and grids that a uh, boat player will be assigned to. Uh, they're static throughout the whole game, but they are placed exactly where convoys and, and transports should be within the game. I forget the name of the sea, if it has one. I'm sure it does. But I've also seen patrols available that put you right around here 
north of patrolling north of Liness, and there's not a whole lot of shipping up here. Yeah, and there's you know those kind of north trying to intercept those northern routes, but of course the game. Really but the game doesn't have any shipping that heads to yeah. Liness or Leith. So basically, anything that you encounter up here during your patrol is going to be all warships, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, and and that's. You know, there is a shipping line that arrives in 1943. However, the missions that send you there... Oh, well, arrive. in 1943. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have to wait two years. You could get that mission, you know, ten times over the course of two game years. And um, you wouldn't see a ship until that one spawner started activating and sending ships up through Norway, past Norway to Russia. Okay, so tip for new players. If you start out in Bergen, don't start out in Bergen. Or transfer as soon as you can. Yeah. I usually start out in Wilhelmshaven, and I'm always grabbing patrols that put me uh, in or nearby the Celtic Sea. And as you can see, major choke point. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Also, La Rochelle, I believe, will also send you on patrols either in the Celtic Sea or even further south along uh, Portugal. Intercepting convoys coming out of Sierra Leone and convoys coming out of uh, the Mediterranean. I know I have, but, uh, range is a thing. Range is an issue. Let me give myself maximum fuel efficiency. So if you're just running, if you're running an automated crew where the officer will only update the no group or go to bed. If you're running an automated crew where your navigational officer Damn it, son, go to bed. If you're running an automated crew where the navigational officer will only hit the nav table when your navigational correctness needs updating, you're usually only getting the 30% fuel bonus. And on a full tank, that means you're getting about... About 18,000 kilometers maximum range. Yeah, about 18,000. If you have the... No, this is the 50% bonus. Would you go to bed, you son of a gun? Let me just take away your helpers. There we go. So, with just the engine bonus, uh, we have a 30% fuel efficiency, 15,000 kilometers. Which is actually realistic. That's the realistic value for the Type 7, was a maximum range of 15,000 kilometers at 10 knots, which is forward speed 2. Now... Of course, you want to get back home, so what you really have to do is take that number and cut it in half. So about 7,000 kilometers, right? Yeah, just about. I think it's a little over 7,000. So not including, not including having to sail around navigational obstacles, not including the fuel burned up when... Uh, Engaging in emergency maneuvers or running down a convoy and burning up that extra fuel by running on flank speed, which burns up a lot of fuel. Uh, you lose about 30% range whenever you're running on maximum speed. Uh, so this would be your range if you didn't do any emergency maneuvers. You were only ever running on forward speed 2, 10 knots while still giving yourself enough fuel to make it back home. This will take you basically to Canada from La Rochelle, while still having just barely enough fuel to make it back. But more realistically, I would think your range is accounting for emergency maneuvers. I would say your range is about four to 5,000 kilometers from your home port. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, in a realistic playthrough, um, I've, I've even tried it to make to Canada, and it was, you really had to perfect every single maneuver just to make it that far, so I think that's accurate. Okay, but your mod adds in stand-ins for the milch cows, doesn't it not? Uh, so we have worked on doing that. Um, there are ports that are further out that are available for the player. Um, however, th 
there are limitations to what we can do currently, um, and the devs are aware of this. And we I've talked with them extensively about you know how players can utilize ports and you know custom added ports. Um, but you've but, done that. You've added custom ports to the game, ports that players can dock at. Yeah. So like Dakar uh, port, which is on the west coast of Africa, uh, it was another kind of, and I think there's a port near South America that was, you know, utilized in, in some cases for U-boats to refuel. Um, and also milk cows were, you know, big logistical help in getting the type sevens all the way across the Atlantic. Um, and that, you know, those, those milk cows aren't available, but these stand-in ports are uh, there's issues in doing that and you know helping the player utilize those to refuel but uh they, it is possible to use those ports okay and on that subject let me find, see if i have a slide for that here we go this is the meat and potatoes of your mod right this is the main, this is the, the beginning of it all. This is the groundwork for everything. All right, so talk about that. 20 additional ports. Is that referring to every That's port actually, in all nationalities, or is that just ally, uh, German ports? That is an old, that should actually be updated. So if anyone's got good, you know, Photoshop skills, can you make that like 50 or 60? Um, 60 ports. Yeah, it's about 50 or 60 worldwide. Worldwide, not just German, not just... But you've you've also yeah. added playable, dockable ports that yeah. the player can visit, dock at, and resupply from. Yeah. So we I add uh, the French coast with additional ports. A lot of these were already made by or defined by the developers, and I just re-enabled them. Um, in other cases, there are ports along the uh, northern coast of Africa in the Mediterranean. Uh, that were periodically controlled by Germany and Italy uh, during the battle for uh, the coast of Africa and all the way down to Dakar and I believe there's one other port even further south um, almost down to the Cape that was periodically controlled um, or at least friendly so it, um, not I wouldn't say friendly but I use v, uh, the Vichy French which is France that was occupied by Germany and basically the government, you know, a temporary government was installed. Uh, the ports that then become under the domain and control of Germany, I use those to support player activities in the game. So those, those are all throughout the, the world. You know, France had, you know, colonies and, and harbors that they had control over all around the world. And when that transition happened, I provide those same ports to the player. I should have asked you this. Uh, what year I should start my campaign in with UBE Stu running. But I just started I just started the earliest one, yeah. I think it'd be a good yeah. place to start. So here we go. Here is uh U Boat with the U Boat expanded mod, starting in the experimental campaign, which is what U Boat thirty yeah, U-Boat 30 uh, is the... I forget what of, model number I am. <laughs> this is a VI, uh, type, VIAA? What is that? Type 6? I don't know. The Type 7A mod, modified? I forgot my ID number. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. But yeah, this is the 1939 campaign. And uh looks like Germany hasn't invaded France yet, so all of these ports are still red. There's no La Rochelle that we can dock at. Is that the Grafsby? Why do I see a carrier icon? What is that? Okay, no, that's just a merchant icon. I thought it was a carrier. My bad. Yeah, so here we go with the some of the small bugs that occur in the game, and I can explain why those happen, but um, going back to that spawning of ships and kind of convoys, when we added one of the things that you'll find with U-Boat Expanded and Living U-Boat, the, both these two mods are built on the same groundwork, same principles. Um, is that when you do these uh, German merchants, German warships, uh, as they return to port, they 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 take up the dock locations, and mm. you can't remove them, and the game will just keep them there, you know, infinitely. So 
Yeah, kind yeah. of problematic having a ship docked in a sub pen. Yeah, exactly. And that's this yeah. makes sense. Yeah. This does not bring joy. <laughs> and this is one of those things that you know we. But then again, on. Wilhelm's Haven is also a tiny port. Not not exactly tiny, but there's limited space to work with in here. Yeah, and uh, well, Wilhelm was a huge port. Uh, however, in the game, it is you know, pretty basic in its implementation. Um, also, I just noticed that. So Wilhelm's Haven encounters high and low tides, which is why it has these locks, as it does in real life to this day. But what the heck is this? The water can flow right in through these. Yeah, uh, I, th I think it was. Oh, yeah, that was um, back when they originally released the workshop. And uh, a lot of players kind of had comments about how the uh, those gates on the dock would basically crush the player and damage the U-boat. So what they did was they kind of removed little portions kind of, of kind of Wilhelm. defeats the purpose of a lock if you just open up the area. <laughs> right, exactly. But the, their voices were heard and answered. So they uh... asked for... I think, you know, and with this recent kind of development update that we got from the devs just this week, which is great to hear, um, and them working on port assets is, I think issues like this and kind of inconsistencies with the, the ports is going to be worked on. Is that an aerodrome? That's a German aerodrome. Yeah, so that's a uh, temporary asset that we're using, um, using right now to allow you... German aircraft to spawn. So German aircraft will spawn? That is correct. So using your mod, is there a chance that a player might get a friendly aircraft coming in and bombing the crap out of an escort. So if a, actually there's a very specific instance of where that will happen. And it's kind of a bug in my mod because I haven't worked on this yet. Um, in 1944, late 1944, early 1945, I forget the exact date. Um, Wilhelm was occupied very, during the very end of the war. Um, by allies there's a convoy that actually goes to Wilhelm to forward off supplies to the US and British troops that are pushing towards Germany in Berlin and I loaded that up once and you will actually see that exact same airfield sending German aircraft and British aircraft and you know ships kind of just all hovering around each other attacking each other um, wasn't good for performance of the game but uh, if you get to that far in the campaign and you're near Wilhelm that's what you'll find Interesting. So, yeah. But so you did add aircraft, but under specific instances. Yeah. So I limited German aircraft to really just patrol uh, around the coast of Germany um, and Denmark when Denmark is occupied. Um, so it's limited just because it's very hard to test when I implement changes to this. Um, but the intention, and as we go forward, is that, uh, and as more aircraft and things like that are added, that I'll use those aircraft to, you know, maybe patrol the, the English Channel. And you'll see both Br British and German aircraft kind of fighting over air superiority for the Fair channel. enough. Fair enough. It is an ambitious mod, and you need to test things one at a time. Yeah. And while also keeping in mind which mods you should incorporate into the Megabot and which mods you should put aside as optional for the player. Exactly. So, yeah, France is at war with Germany. Germany has not occupied France yet. Here's Poland and a Polish port. Oof. Imagine being a Polish port and having to navigate through Skagerrak. Like, just drop a U-boat right here, and that cuts Poland off from the rest of the world. Right? And and that is exactly what happened. Interesting. Oh, are you even... Wow, look at all of this. And these aren't just there for decoration. Every port that you've added with this mod uh, has stuff spawning at it and heading to it, right? That is correct. So I'm a little at scared some point to, in time... Oops, I'm a little scared to pop that detect 1000 command. Go ahead and I'd 
I live in that command, so. Really? Really? Yeah. You did this? Um, really? In Japan? We can't so, even go there yet. <laughs> we can't go there yet, and I don't advise going there because there's limitations with the game right now that don't allow anything to really spawn in the Pacific, um, and this is understood by the devs and me, um, but I believe they will be opening up this region for modding to be utilized properly uh, this next patch. British, so I'm, British, I'm awaiting. British occupied India. Wow, man, you you are taking this to a whole nother level. It's there. It's all there. It's ready. It just doesn't spawn because the game doesn't let it. Okay, so not every one of these spawns a convoy, at least not in the Pacific, right? Not today, but they okay. will. Christ, I'm man. just waiting for that. I'm, it's like a it's like a, a gate. I'm waiting for the devs to lift that gate so I can go charging in this Pacific because right, that'll let's be. Do it. Oh. So one thing of note when you do this, you're going to enable the detect all. Um, the game needs detect, a few days detect to, space all? Yeah, to spawn the convoys. Because we are actually starting this campaign at the minimum value that this game initializes. Um, it initializes on September 1st of 1939. And so everything you see um, very early on in this campaign... Uh, a lot of the spawners haven't actually had time to accumulate ships because they literally just started creating ships uh, what, now, a few days ago. Now, so. to, to touch on a conversation that you and I had when we first met and started talking about this mod, uh, why would you why would you spawn shipping in areas that the player can't even access, such as Panama? Yeah, so... There's two reasons to that. Uh, I, I feel like the first, I mean, first, uh, I, I wasn't really considering fully, you know, what the player was going to be experiencing using the Type 7. Um, and I, actually, at the time, I probably didn't even realize that the Type 7 couldn't get that far. Um, but it was one historical accuracy. Uh, I would look at what the game was spawning, and I just naturally fell. I was like, there's all these things and you read through history and, and what happened during World War II and there's a huge historical background to, uh, you know, Brazil and Panama and um, a lot of these American shipping routes that go through the Americas um, that, you know, Germany was very adamant to interfere with and uh, put a huge effort into sending U-boats down here and, and while maybe the game doesn't really fully enable a player to get that experience um you know modding that in and providing players the ability to go down there and experience that themselves is something that i really wanted to do i'm sure some players would really appreciate that even if they can't directly interact with it but you were telling me something else when we had that conversation something about the way that the oh. scripts the data sheets handle this data that you've given them something about one port feeding into another yeah, yeah. So um, one of the things that I did was I took all of the known convoy uh, patrol data that's known online, and I basically got into the game. And some of it, most, you know, most of it works exactly as intended. But one of the nice things that I realized about this was if you look at some of the ports, this port of Spain, and there's uh, uh, I believe I'm pronouncing this Caraco. Um, Oh, that was ports. down here, right? Yeah, and they there it is. Um, they were utilized to send a lot of American shipping over to the western coast of Africa to support naval invasions. Um, and what you'll see is that other ports like Panama, down the coast of South America, Cuba, um, they will actually have ships that originate in Cuba, Panama, and they will meet up at one singular location um, before making a major convoy motion to across that makes the sense. Atlantic. That's, that's what they did in real life. They would, of course, yeah. a convoy didn't just, <laughs> convoys didn't just emerge all from one port. They accumulated. They would kind of agree on a meeting place and they would all sail down and meet up at a specified time before beginning their trek together, safety in numbers, 
across the Atlantic. Also, not just safety in numbers, but kind of uh, the more of us there are, they can't kill us all at the same time kind of deal. And it was a it was a cruel reality, but they actually would pack the meatiest, heaviest freighters and tankers in the center of the convoy and kind of shield them with the lighter merchants, wouldn't they? It's not a comfortable feeling, but yeah, that's basically how they would act. Um, it, it was actually really interesting. So when I was developing these mods and the convoys uh, for expanded shipping early on, I there was probably about 400 convoys, uh, unique convoy codes that I had discovered and basically committed to adding to the game. And so I added these 400 convoys and I noticed a lot of them are very small. Like they had codes that I'd never heard of before. And they would say, hey, on average, about four ships would leave on this convoy. And I was like, why is this important? And, you know, I was kind of, I was almost questioning, like, why am I adding this? Why, you know, should I really <laughs> be committing to adding this one convoy that has four ships going, you know, 100 nautical miles to another port? And what I realized was that there's, you know, for one port, there's eight of these small merging convoys and then one big major convoy. And what happens is you see this kind of collection of ships come together in the game and it naturally comes into the game, you know? So as I created this mod and developed it, you naturally see these kind of transports going to this one location. And then that one port location and you sends even, off this huge convoy. This was behavior that you weren't even expecting when you were plugging in the data. Yeah. I, this was, I learned this after the fact, after I did this mod. <laughs> so did you ever see the movie Tron legacy? Yes, sir. Do you remember what, uh, Jeff Bridges' character was talking about the isomorphic algorithms. Yeah. He planted the seed. He created the environment where they could spawn and without even realizing it. He wasn't even expecting it. They just emerged. And that's kind of what's yeah. been happening with your data sheet injection. Unexpected yeah. behavior of convoy spawning. And didn't you say that uh, something special happens like... Uh, during special historical events that you weren't even expecting, so, but the data is there. Yeah. So some of the great examples to this kind of emergent behavior that, you know, I was just blindly going and adding the data. But when I started testing, um, I noticed certain things would just occur in the game. So one example was the Western coast of Africa um, in 1942. All of a sudden, tons of convoys from South America and America started heading to the west coast of africa all throughout different port locations and i kind of was like all right what's going on what i realized is it, this was the allied support that was going into supporting the war effort in africa and fighting germany and italy uh and taking over territory that's the amazing. other one was d-day it was you know one of the largest naval efforts that took place ever in the world um you know it, there was probably 20 convoy codes that were just created for the sole purpose for taking ships all across the world from ports and locations all around the world. I mean, even in the Pacific to support this one focal event of the invasion into France. So without even realizing it, without even realizing yeah. it, you were creating interesting historical events in the game through unexpected emergent behavior from the data sheet injections. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty impressive. Uh, it's and, a real learning experience. And shipping lanes weren't even the only thing. I, we have a clip for this. Uh, Somebody's reporting that the video is very loud. Give me a second. Sorry about that. Starting the video over. Thank you. Thank you for that chat. Thank you very much. Uh, so in case we got overshadowed by the, the video's volume, uh, once again, what we're looking at here is raw data from online available U-boat patrol data. Yeah, this is the visualization it's... of raw patrol data of U-boats from World War II. Yeah, specifically uh, German. This is all sourced from uboat.net. I have to give all the credit to that website and the team that supports that website and, the, and compiles that information. Um, but they, they've been a great help in, you know, helping me get this data off of their site and obviously being able to build information like this. 
That's incredible. I, I see patrols heading uh, to Iceland, Greenland, patrols heading all the way down to Canada, patrols heading down to the Caribbean and the northern coast of South Africa, as well as, uh, let me run that again, actually, because it's really interesting. Canada, Caribbean, the northern coast of South America, Venezuela, and down the west coast of Africa. And you took this data, this data we're looking at, that's been visualized on this globe, and you put it into the game as well. Yeah, that was a hell of a challenge, but this is one of the recent, I think in the last probably four months, three, four months, this was update 0 0.4 for U-Boat Expanded, uh, where I basically took monthly snapshots of this data and injected... Uh, spawner elements to reflect all of this uh, so there's huge amounts of data i think there's over almost about ten thousand lines uh, of data in this um, but from that i use scripts and vba to kind of extract and compile small uh, usable data sheet elements something i can use in the game to create this, recreate, or to the best of my ability, recreate this experience and what you're seeing in in this kind of video. Um, it's obviously not to the same fidelity, but it this was the groundwork for all of the U-Boat Patrol da data. Um, the intent being was I wanted the player to be able to experience and see these U-Boat Patrols, how they actually happened, you know. The base game, it's just... There's a very static, this is, you know, this is the one missions that NPC U-boats take. And I wanted to show, hey, in 1939, you know, the, the focus was around Britain and Norway. Um, and that developed throughout the course of the year to, you know, take on different areas like Africa, as you see here, um, and around the Cape. And so there's all these events that happen throughout the war and there's actually reasons for every single one of them so here you're seeing a huge push of german u-boats to the east coast of america and this is really when germany started figuring out that america was supporting shipping to britain and, and so they africa. were waiting for the ships to leave port and then intercepting them on their way to, to the uk exactly and so, they, so rather than rather than hunting near the celtic sea which had a lot of air cover from the british they were intercepting the convoys closer to the source. Exactly. And you can read about those same events in, you know, in history articles and, and books, you know, on World War II, um, where America was basically in the news was saying, oh, you know, wow, a, a you know, British ship literally got sunk, you know, a few nautical miles off the coast of Virginia or Boston. And, you know, these were U-boat patrol, German U-boats that were literally coming right up to the doorstep of America and other areas around the world. And there were some U-boats that were actually sunk by American coastal patrols off of the coast yeah. of the U.S. and Canada. I remember that. Yeah, and, and long before that, long before uh, America even officially joined in the war, um, in some cases, you know, you see these kind of silent conflicts between the nations. Isolated incidents. So... In addition to your mod spawning shipping out of these additional ports, you also added NPC U-boats, not just spawning from the extra German ports that you added in, but you also sent these NPC U-boats off on patrols based on this data. Yeah, so as you see the, the data kind of, as you see, you know, patrols kind of go to the East Coast, I use that same exact data to say, hey, from Bergen or from La Roche, actually more accurately, from the west coast of France, uh, send German U-boats to these far off North American coastlines. Now that's uh, that's the, the NPC U-boats, but what about player patrols, player missions? Yeah, so with the most recent version, this same exact data was used to generate the player mission content. And this most recent release Point five, um, really is that incorporation into the player missions. Now, there's a lot of considerations I had to take in 
making sure I'm not assigning missions that are just so far away. Um, missions that wouldn't perform. make sense for the flotilla that you're based out of. Right. Um, and so I had to really kind of hone that in. And when I assigned those missions, where did I assign those missions from? But the nice thing was that I, when I created these missions for the player, you know, if I create a mission from Wilhelm, um, that the data that is being used for those missions is only the patrol data from that specific German port. For La Rochelle, it's only the data from La Rochelle or uh, Lorient. Uh, so it's it is a direct you know compare or it's a direct extraction of that those to, to avoid the player getting offered a mission that takes them beyond the capacity of their fuel yeah so there's still you know because the the data that i'm using is is all u-boats it's not right now it's not filtered um for just the type 7 um and there's reasons why i did that and there's just reasons why i shouldn't do that um but I, I, I manually basically say, hey, here's a cutoff point, you know, and, and it's kind of what you showed earlier, that, that range to Canada. Um, and I, I basically say, if, you know, don't, don't generate a mission all the way out to, you know, the Gulf, you know, the Gulf or Mexico or Panama or down way by the Cape of Africa. Um, just because, you know, the game's not really at a state right now where we can implement an infrastructure to support that kind of player experience. Generating but, generating missions only for the Type 7 until we hopefully have... Imagine us. Imagine having the Type 9 and having two different sets of missions available to a player based on what you both are in. That'd be cool. But So generating missions only for the Type 7 and generating missions within a reasonable range of their yeah. flotilla or their home port. You wouldn't want to send a boat from Wilhelmshaven all the way down to the Cape. Even if exactly, even if there were ports in between that the boat could stop at to resupply, you know why send a boat from Wilhelmshaven down to the Cape when you could send a a boat that was stationed in La Spezia or La Rochelle, or exactly a boat that's stationed further south, closer to the Cape. You don't want to send all your boats that are stationed in the Wilhelm's flotilla to the Celtic Sea or the English Channel. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and the other nice thing about this is that it's these missions change over time. So every month, um, those same exact missions that are provided to the player are regenerated every month for every port that the player Also needs. based on historical data, right? Exactly. Okay. Um, and see, right here we have some missions that I wouldn't have expected. Uh, we have the English Channel, which makes sense. We also have Portugal, which seems a bit of a stretch for Wilhelmshaven, but... You know, it does kind of make sense. Yeah, so I'll take that back. So P Portugal does make sense, even though we're already, we're all the way up in Wilhelmshaven. Wilhelmshaven is our only port at this stage of the war. Yeah, and it, it you know, there are instances like this where, it, I mean, I haven't done the filtering to limit to type 7, so it's all data. So there are some well, U-boats that existed early on in the war that had Personally, really I think I could make it. I think I can make it here. Yeah, you you absolutely could. If um, I was conservative with my fuel, and if I like, if I just made it made it a point to only head here, try to ignore other contacts I might run into along the way, conserve my fuel as best as I can, and you know what, this is a thought. Missions should also base their difficulty based on the range. So it takes a smart player, a clever player to make it out to some of these distant patrol zones based on clever uh, fuel conservation. Yeah, and that's the general principle that I've been trying to follow with doing this generation. Um, right now is the first iteration. There's a lot of balancing that needs to go into, you know, doing this process. Uh, there are limitations as well, but uh, this is the initial implementation. There's still some, it, it, you know, places where I accidentally throw in a grid or mission patrol that's a little bit too a little bit too much for a normal player even a veteran player to accomplish reasonably uh, but for the most part I think uh, it, it it utilizes the historical data in a way that is dynamic you know that creates dynamic content and, and mission generation that's interesting so if you're watching this 
and you want to support this mod, please play this mod and harass, no, I mean, notify Link of any bugs you find. We need playtesters for this mod because, you know, like we were saying, it, it's kind of like the isomorphic algorithms from Tron. He just kind of plugged this data in and let it rip. Uh, so there might be some unexpected behavior, especially when it comes to mission generations for the player. So please submit all feedback to the modding channel uh, in the U-Boat Discord. Uh, but another mission, look at that. Attack the port of La Rochelle. 16,000 budget reward, 1.0 reputation points, and we get a radio officer out of it for attacking La Rochelle. That's pretty cool. And so if we were to actually start a playthrough on UBE uh, from this experimental 1939 starting career, uh, we could attack the port of La Rochelle, and then as the war progresses, we can eventually call this port our home, right? Exactly, yeah. Incredible. All right, let me just select something to get us rolling and try to generate more shipping lanes because I really want to see that generated on the map. Let me stock us up with some fuel. We're going to need it. Let, let the game run a few days. Some more stuff gets generated. Again, uh, this 1939 campaign is, is really pushing the limit of what the developers kind of had available. Uh, but a good skip time really helps. The the other ports that you added that players can dock at, I don't suppose those have auto navigation support. No, um, they are reusing assets uh, that are used in other places in the game, and a lot of those assets that I reuse for these custom ports uh, don't have those kind of navigational features uh, working fully. I mean. There's probably a way that I could make it work, maybe, but I haven't figured that out yet. Fair enough. Sounds like more modern collaboration is needed. Yeah, and one thing to really kind of hit on with this mod is that, uh, you know, the mod, as far as, like, assets, the you know, the only asset this mod really adds to the game is flags. So as far as everything else is just data and I am just reusing what's already in the game to create all the content. Uh, I'm not adding new a aircraft or new ships or, and, you know, new port like models. Um, I'm really just taking Belfast, right? For example, and I'm saying, Hey, Belfast, rename yourself and place yourself here as Dakar. Clever. So there, there are limitations in doing that, um, but there's also, you know, a lot of advantages to doing that. Limitations being that some things like auto-navigation or um, some of the UI elements that you see when you dock a, a port may not be available because the port that I utilized was not meant for player usage. Thank you for also filling the time while I work this out. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, when you're testing this, you know, for everybody watching, you know, if you're if you're playing with this, and let's say you go to a port like Dakar, um, a lot of times what I hear is that, hey, you know, I don't see the resupply icon where I can click resupply, um, and one of the reasons that happens is because the the port that I use to create Dakar when it's owned by Germany is I think Cardiff or Belfast, and the that port that the developers made. Uh, never had the intention of allowing a, a, a regular player to get out of the U-boat, walk around the dock, things like that. So you can't actually walk on through the dock. Um, you're actually stuck. And some of the other things is like the, the NPCs that you normally would see at La Rochelle or Bergen um, aren't there. And, you know, I don't have the ability to go through and modify every single port to include that feature, um, but I do the best I can. And so... Things like supply points are still there. They're hard to find. So if anyone uses this and you're at a port that you think you should be able to utilize, like Dakar, somewhere in the Mediterranean or coast of Africa, um, 
takes a little bit of work, but the supply points and usability of those custom ports that I add into this game, uh, oh. you can use them. It's just, it can be difficult sometimes. I saw something interesting. So there was, a, of London. there was a small convoy moving west towards the Port of London. Here we go. I'm starting to generate more convoys now, it looks like. And, you know, as we were talking about in vanilla, don't expect many convoys or shipping at all to be hitting any of these eastern United Kingdom ports, but it looks like it, with your mod, they certainly are. Looks like they're coming right out of these ports right here, the port of Antwerp and the port of, uh, not even going to try to pronounce that. Let's take a look at this one and see what it is. What are you? So one of the recent changes I actually made to the mod, uh, was shipping lanes, um, are going are, are soon going to get a pretty big rework um, in how they're implemented um, and this is not regarding convoys or trans like actual military transports um, but i changed the display name so they're a little bit more generic a little bit more kind of feels natural within the game this is a belgian ship that's free game if i if i remember you're not at war, but they definitely uh, sunk some Belgian ships early on. Another Belgian ship. I wonder if I can... I'll use the map mode to get it. look at each of their names. That is an explorer. I'm starting to recognize these by sight. Another explorer. Explorers have those huge, large Samson poles on the back, or king posts, if you want to call them that. Okay, so it looks like this entire convoy is all Belgian. And if we zoom in, we have the Susan, Suzanne, the Somber. And the Alex von Opstel. Who are you? The Ville de Liege. Village of the King. If if I if I got that right. Well, either way, that's pretty cool. An entire Belgian convoy. And let's see if they react to me. They are neutral. You know, when I was testing out your mod, I ran into a Turkish convoy. I wasn't sure if they were valid targets or not. So what I did was I just surfaced and played chicken with them to see if they panicked and became alarmed. Yeah, it's, I wonder how neutral ships react to U-boats. Let's find out. So what are things with with uh the ship names is uh one of the mods which is expanded ship names goes in and rips out i think roughly around 30 or forty thousand vessels and the names and their activity dates during world war ii and, and that's the the data that is provided and utilized to name these ships it doesn't look like they're reacting so are you saying for the most part, um, ship names are based on their nationality? Yeah, um, there's a few instances where it's kind of weird because uh, countries would actually trade ships. Um, and so you get kind of weird occurrences. Uh, but one of those isolated, vessel right? names is, kind is of I think, French. Yeah, like, um, and the data that I have within the game may not fully realize that, hey, this should be... A French ship, or it was a French name ship, now Belgian, and it's been renamed to something else. Uh, because a lot of times, when they, tr you know, another country purchases a ship, they rename it to something that's uh, of their own. But for the most part, yeah, you get. Uh, I think there was probably three thousand 
Belgian Netherlands ship names that I included. I could just use teleport commands to get down to Portugal, but I want to see how it how we how we fare on fuel by getting there normally with an automated crew for engines and navigation. It's been a few days as well. I wonder if we have any more. Getting there. Nothing coming from Canada yet. Is that uh is that part of part of the data? Shipping hasn't ramped up yet from Canada? Um so there are two convoys that should be coming. So again, I think due to the fact that no Whoa. spawners start. We got a big boy here. Basically, I'm, I'm working with the devs. I'm, I'm asking them to actually allow the game to start before September so that I can create these shipping transports that have been fully generated across the map for a good period of time to fill in a lot of the data. Um, you don't actually see these shipping lanes really fill in the map until you know a few weeks uh, into the game. So looking at the convoy code, KS is Casablanca to Brest. And we just passed Brest. There's Brest. Casablanca. Where's Casablanca? Down south by... Or... They're coming from Gare south. Casa. Yeah, Gare de Casa is in Casablanca. I'm, I'm American, okay? I'm not that versed in my geography. Yeah, so I think it's Gare de Casa, that, that right along... Right here? Right here? Yeah. Okay. So they came from here, and they're heading north up to Brest. And that's pretty cool. I gotta say, that's pretty cool, because that means that, uh, unlike in Vanilla... The Celtic Sea isn't home anymore to the juiciest convoys. You can also find large convoys heading elsewhere. In this case, it looks like uh, the west coast of Spain and Portugal is also prime hunting grounds for large convoys. And it's a bit of a stretch sending us from Wilhelmshaven down near Gibraltar, but Wilhelmshaven is the only home port available to us for the Kriegsmarine. So it makes sense. And uh, we didn't burn up that much fuel getting here. And actually, if I recall correctly, the vessel that does that patrol this early in the war actually went north around Britain. We burned up about 20% fuel getting here. And of course, the player can also eke that out even more by slowing down to forward one. It'll take them longer to get here, but they'll conserve even more fuel. Uh, I'm going to keep going. For a little bit longer. I'm going to try to get it into the next month and then see what else spawns in this area. In the meantime, while I'm working on that, let us talk about the other features of UBE. If I missed anything, where's our slideshow? The expanded grid system. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, so that was that was big challenge to implement but uh, I had stumbled across a site that I think is called Naval Grid Calculator um, and it was someone that had gone through a large collection of German maps and basically created an online uh, mapping system that you can utilize to determine the grid around the world right you can provide a coordinate, provides you a grid, talks about how the grids are made and how they're determined. Um, and when I was looking through that, I actually noticed that a lot of the grids in, in the maps used by Germany uh, are 
very ornate and detailed and kind of how they're laid out and where they're laid out and in the base game most of the grids if are basically squares um, and in, in a lot of cases that is how they look um, but it was kind of my intention to uh, oh and, and also in the base game it doesn't include the entire map so if you look in the pacific there's no grids if you look you know in south america there's a certain cutoff point where it kind of just stops um so what I wanted to do was one fill it in and what I found out as I was filling in those grids that were missing, you know, a lot of them were actually uh, much more precise and, and had small little nuances that weren't really captured in, in the base game that I wanted to add in just for, you know, the historical accuracy. You know, I think a lot of, you know, uh, historians and people that are very familiar with this kind of uh, maps and, and things like that would quickly pick up on the errors. And so I, I really wanted to bring forward something that was uh, could be appreciated by that community. And because you're adding in a lot of content that takes you outside of the vanilla areas of operation. Yeah, and that being the intent, right, of, of U-Boat Expanded is to really encompass the whole world as far as the game. Um, it's not there yet, but uh, in doing that, you know, you need to have grid systems, ports, you know, shipping lanes, all these things built out and really covering the whole world. And, and so that this was one of those aspects that I need to implement to really ensure that as I move forward, that that underlying infrastructure um, is there and ready. Mozine asks if airplanes behave differently with your mod. Um, the the NPC behavior isn't any different. I don't have the ability to change how the aircraft. I, I don't I don't modify how the aircraft behave in, in specifically. Um, however, I do add spawners of aircraft um, in many different areas. I expand um, British air patrols and and how they patrol and where they patrol. Um, so I, you know, in the base game, it's usually you know one or two grids, um, very close to uh, their originating location. Um, I wanted to really reflect the naval air patrols that would occur off of out of Britain and cover huge vast areas of the ocean. All right. The famous ship bug is back. Oh, there. <laughs> you know, just a. Empire Tower just chilling out right there. In the sub pen right next to us. Uh, I guess it would be kind of game breaking if it was if there were no available sub pens left when we came back to home port, huh? <laughs> that is the bane of this mod. It is a challenge, to say the least. Okay, so yeah, there's a lot more blue territory that we're looking at here. There's the aerodrome. I see more than one aerodrome for Germany. Now, let's see what kind of missions are available for us this time. Okay, well, oh, that's interesting. Okay, yeah, so there's German ships here in port with us, but there's also Italian ships here. That is the Italian flag, right? I'm not stupid. That is correct. Okay. Cool. I don't actually know why there's Italian ships there, so I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't think I added that into the game. I apparently did. Um, I do were you have just, were you just drunk mod making? It's like, oh, I don't remember what I programmed last night. Oh. It's, <laughs> it's one of the, I think, 3,000 sandbox data sheet lines. Let's talk to our leader here and see which missions are available. Please don't break. Please don't break. Portsmouth. Espionage. Patrol sector. That's interesting. That's really out there, man. Above the Norwegian Sea, patrolling... Really? So did did, it, did Germany really own ports this far north? Territory this far north? 
so in this case where the ports have changed the German ownership, uh, there is a transition period that happens in Norway as the Norwegian uh, basically remaining fighters and military are pushed north. Um, I switched the ownership over to Germany. However, uh, did Germany fully utilize those ports? No. Uh, they did not utilize all of those ports. They did use Narvik, Hammerfest, uh, Kirkness in early 1942. Sure enough, there is shipping to be to be had in this patrol area. A uh, lot of stuff coming out of Arkhang Arkhangelsk? Arkhangelsk? I don't. Russian port? Russian port. So there is shipping up here. So it's not just a patrol area out of out of nowhere necessarily. But that that's interesting. That patrol area that we just saw available above the Norwegian Sea, was that something that you generated? Yeah. Okay, was... because normally there isn't really shipping up here in vanilla. Yeah, no. Um this was all generated the the only thing that's handcrafted is the shipping lanes so merchant shipping lanes is handcrafted at the moment um that's kind of a to-do item but as far as convoys that's all generated warships code looks like these names need a bit of touching up yeah i wish i could change that <laughs> one of the things BD we convoy of one ship yeah, the BD convoy is a Russian convoy that goes to Dixon's, which is uh, to the east, a little bit further east, along the northern coast of Russia. So it starts here and then it heads east? Uh, no, it starts it starts there and heads east, yeah. Right there, if you see that port, that's the port. Dixon. Sure enough. So it's coming from Arkhangelsk and heading east to Dixon. Not exactly something that the player can interact with, but still interesting. And my initial thought when you told me all about this, my first thought was, oh my God, I can't believe all this stuff is running in the background. The poor player. Think of the player's performance. You know, think of their, their computer, their CPU, that it's handling all this stuff in the background. But it's not actually that big of a deal on the, on the player's computer resources, is it? No, um... The actual, you know, once you're in the game, uh, all the shipping data and all the stuff doesn't have a significant impact. I mean, n there are things in the game that have a much harder impact on player performance, SPS, things like that. Um, but actually just having the convoys in the game, it's pretty light. Good God. I would say the biggest impact that this kind of mod and other mods similar to Evo Expanded have is lo initial loading time. So starting a game or loading a save game can take quite a bit longer than a normal base game might. Um, but once it's up and running, it's pretty smooth. I see convoys that I recognize, such as the OB convoy, even though I'm sure this is modified, even has UE as the prefix. But look at this, SLF convoy, 23 to 51 SLS Convoy 23 to 51. That's massive. Yeah. Um, I. So a lot of the convoys I actually built to reflect the... Uh, as close as I could get without really being too extreme, but um, I have a hard limit on how many ships can spawn in a convoy um, while trying to maintain an accurate representation of the, con the content of that convoy. So... Um, there's a lot of data out there where I derive the average convoy size for every single convoy and that size is represented in the game US convoy 7 to 15 coming out of Durban CD convoy CM PG 10 to 22 FN 21 to 47 TS, 10 to 22. RT, 5 to 10, small. Some of these code names need fixing. 118, 22, 52. Where did they actually have numbered convoy codes? 
So anything that you see that says like UE a number shipping transport, um, this is a temporary in place name, so I can identify uh, placeholders. A merchant, yeah, it's a, it's basically a placeholder. So normally it would just be merchant shipping transport. Um, that's kind of what it's supposed to say, um, but when a player encounters a bug or you know an issue with a specific transport i have to have a unique name for every single convoy at the risk of getting killed i'm just going to teleport to some of these custom u uh, u-boat expanded convoys that's a cruiser it's a big convoy the limbo pollux freighter i bet it has a name fort to trial. Uh, another white flag merchant. British merchant. I'll, yeah. It, it has a white flag, but it's red. So it's not... White flag doesn't mean neutral. Keep in mind, if you're playing this mod, white flag just means not implemented. It might also be the albedo on the material. It may be incorrect so at certain angles the flag just appears white improperly this is a big convoy and here we have what looks like a uh that's not a dale I'm starting to recognize like i said these ships by name but uh yeah that's a big convoy and it has some escorts uh, let's try this sls convoy I know you see me you see me using these console commands, you know. Refrain from using them yourself if you can. You're just gonna spoil the fun. Another massive convoy. We have a neutral tanker, which is American. French. French. Norwegian. Norwegian. So, I have a question for you, and I'm sure a lot of players are curious about this. What are the rules of engagement when encountering a, a neutral ship in a mixed fleet such as this that contains many enemies of Germany? Yeah, um, I mean, historically, you know, there was pretty well-defined rules of engagement for U-boats. Um, you know, they would go after Norwegian, um, you know, Belgian ships. Uh, British, etc. Uh, as far as how the gameplay acts with neutral, um, there's no consequence to actually sinking a neutral ship. Uh, it'll, you know, after you attack it, it'll react accordingly. Um, but as of right now, from how the game operates, you know, if you sink a neutral ship, it's not a big deal. Uh, I do think there's, you know, plans from the devs to kind of implement some type of penalty. You know, penalty or you know repercussion to doing that well historically speaking though what would what would there be if any consequence to sinking a neutral ship that was let's say sailing in an enemy convoy yeah um i mean it, it happened quite frequently um that uh, you know a ship that wasn't officially uh, an aggressor or you know uh, aligned with a specific the allies or axes uh, during the time, they, they still got sunk. Um, and, you know, it was kind of understood that if you participate in these convoys, um, the, the risk is there. You know, you, you are assisting in a war effort and per UN, you know, the Geneva, you know, Geneva Convention, which I don't even think was fully established at that point, um, you know, you are free game for Germany. Good to know. Yeah, Phoenix. Uh, th there are no, uh, you know, neutral outright convoys because all convoys are aligned to an ally uh, nation uh, or you know, uh, controlled and kind of developed by an allied nation. Um, there are definitely neutral participants uh, in those convoys. Uh, not as many. I mean, for a hundred ships that left the port you might see panama or the u.s involved in the convoy before they ever had a formal declaration of war here we go link 
So this is in the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, and off the coast of South America. Lots of areas, wow, even further down South America, out of Belgrano, Aries, Buenos Aires, Sao Pedro. This is stuff that the player has no business being anywhere near or could even necessarily reach with a Type 7. But uh, you have ships coming out of here. And this feeds back to our previous conversation that uh, you, you, you have this running anyway in the background because it all feeds into that historical data. Right? Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of this was just came out. You know, I... I had the data it said ships went from this location to this location um and i create it and it just becomes a part of the data set within the mod um while it may actually surprise you there are german u-boats that patrolled in between south america and uh africa cape um and a few other locations and all the way according to to my research those were mostly type nines yeah, so it's not the Type 7. Um, and I, again, I don't, my, the injection doesn't distinguish between, you know, that you do bow type, but the data that provides and feeds that, um, it's just all of it. But, but even so, even without the player reasonably being able to come down here, there's a reason that you're having ships and shipping spawn from these ports. Absolutely. Which is that they, the smaller ships feed into other ports which spawn the large convoys now you could theoretically just have the end point ports right the ports that just spawn the big convoys and leave out the smaller ports yeah and that is actually um, something that I will work on um, in the future is actually creating a much lighter version of U-Boat Expanded that really just includes the primary kind of bulk of convoys rather than all this additional you know miscellaneous data that comes into play it's still cleverly done though and I can appreciate it and as you said um, there's also some interesting background stuff that's going on like NPC U-boats going out there and attacking these convoys on their own running in the background yeah it's it's pretty interesting I was it January 1940 or February 1941 um, surprisingly enough there's actually not that much uh, U-boat patrol activity in, during this time um, this is probably one of the quietest times for U-boats this was post happy times the first happy times right yeah I, I believe I mean it's still in in that kind of range where there's not much uh, interference with U-boat patrols. Uh, it's not until you know 1942 that you really see a significant uptick, not only in U-boat losses, uh, but the patrols themselves really start taking like a full a range of mission sets and patrol areas. And your mod covers that as well. Yeah. Amazing. Well, so there you have it. Uh, I think that covers most of the brunt differences between vanilla and U-Boat Expanded. Um, going back to our slides here. Like I said, is there anything else we haven't covered yet? On this page in particular. German no, naval activity, think... 20 plus additional ports, additional yeah. allied RAF and USAF airfields. 100 plus allied and neutral shipping lanes. Additional allied military and naval convoys. Map changing ownerships of ports and airfields. Of course, the uh, more diverse ship names, more diverse crew names, more diverse U boat IDs. The additional 1930, 1939 campaign. And the additional missions and objectives which you say is still a work in progress. Have you touched on side missions yet? Or is it just uh, patrol missions? 
Yeah, so right now it's just patrol missions, um, but the current intent uh, with what's available, I can't adjust side missions such as like help this friendly U-boat or um, you know join in in a uh, kind of like a U-boat patrol group. Um, however, there are like the joint flotillas and the espionage and the attack port missions, which right now are just statically set and manually written. Um, but as the developers kind of assist me in getting some work done in the, the base game, uh, we'll be able to utilize that same patrol data that we showed to generate a more refle- accurate representation of those types of missions. Um, specifically instance, in areas. If you just happen to be having an, uh, a U boat expanded custom mission down by Sierra Leone, you might receive a mission to aid a stricken U boat near Sierra Leone. So, yeah, those kind of missions I don't have the ability to interact with. Those just are randomly generated by the game code. Um, there's nothing in the data sheets that defines those types of missions. But what I can do is say, hey, uh, uh, U-boat patrols occurred a lot near Sierra Leone. Hey, let's also create maybe an attack the port mission or um, an espionage mission uh, around okay. that area. And now moving on to the part of the video where we talk about planned features. Yeah, I should have probably held on, <laughs> held off for that. Oh, have we covered most of it already? Uh, no, I mean, so this is a good topic to cover now. Historically um, accurate and dynamic flotilla patrol assignments. I think we covered a bit of that. Uh, additional playable ports. St. Nazaire, Brest, Lorient. More espionage missions. We talked a bit about that. Attack harbor missions. Usable ports for resupply off of coast of Africa to transmit to the Pacific. The Pacific. Yes, some of these crazy ports that you've added near India and Japan, the Dutch East Indies. Yeah, so the the big the big effort that's coming following B one twenty nine, whenever that gets released by the devs, and hopefully the fixes that I need also get implemented, um, because there there are limitations that I cannot work around. Um, I am constrained by some things in the game. Uh, but once those get done, um, the real, you know, a few adjustments to espionage and like the usable ports, playable ports, um, that, that's kind of a sticking point for a lot of players right now is that, you know, you see these ports become available to Germany or to allies of Germany and the player can't really interact with a lot of them. And that's just because you did the add, development. You did add ports so that the player can visit. The ports are there. You can dock there. However, all of these, you may, uh, yeah, you can dock there. the The issue comes into play when you want to resupply or get a new mission from that port, or you know, get out of the ship and walk onto the port. Let's um, check out Brest. So, so a lot of these ports you can't do that with um, because the actual model that is in the game is incomplete. And oh my god, there it is. Is this recycling assets already in the game? Yeah, and that's how these ports are added. They're recycled assets. Heading through the English Channel and you wanted to resupply on your way to, let's say, Portugal or Gibraltar, you might want to stop somewhere to refuel. Now, you could stop at La Rochelle, the traditional vanilla port, but you'd have to head quite a bit east to get to it. Heading from Brest and then continuing on might be a bit faster. So let's check out Brest. There it is. Now this, <laughs> I wasn't showing it in video, but uh, there we go. This is a recycled asset, but it's there. This is a, a port that's not normally available to you in vanilla, but we can visit it and hopefully in just a second we can try to dock at it. Now, auto navigation is not really available for these custom ports. So you're going to have to do it the old fashioned way. Oh God, what are you doing? But players who have been around since, uh, 
the early days are no strangers to manually docking their boats. Oh boy. There we go. Ah, oh, thank goodness. It caught us. There's the warehouse. So we can resupply. Brilliant. And we can even pick up more sailors. Fantastic. So that's good to know. And we can just undock and be on our merry way. We probably have to we probably have to use manual. Yep. We can't even use the auto navigator to leave port. We have to do this all manually, which is fine. It's not that big of a deal. What are you doing? Turn. Yeah, and, and this is, I mean, working with the game and what it is at this state, you know, this is what I'm able to accomplish. There's even a ship docked here. That's cool. So most of these blue ports are all visitable or dockable, just like the breast we were at. Yeah, you shouldn't have too many issues. Um And did you say you already added the ability to change flotilla to, to flotillas to one of these ports? Or is that a planned feature? It's planned. It's not currently implemented at this point. Fair enough. The reason being is the, the port that you saw, like, for example, Brest, the port that you were looking at there was, I believe, Cardiff or uh, one of the other British ports. And the, the game... As far as the asset goes the asset that's utilized and so there's nothing in in that asset that says like this is where the mission npc should be and so if you dock there as a player like for a mission um, there's no npc to receive missions from even though i've defined the missions for that port so well, the thank you for getting at least resupply working yeah that was that's the part that i can provide right now and so if i wanted to i could also go down to Get a de casa to resupply. Yep, that should work just fine too. Now this looks like La Rochelle, which means this should be the dock. Yep, there it is. We're in what looks like La Rochelle, but this is. Gare de Casa. Very cool. This could really extend a player's um, this could really extend a player's patrol if they wanted to stay out longer. They wouldn't have to go all the way back to home port or the near, nearest available vanilla port. They could go anywhere that there is a blue German port. Well, I'm thinking that's just about covering everything. Uh, chat, we're opening this up to the, the AMA portion. Ask me anything. Do you have any questions for Link? If you do, now's the time. I think it's a good question. Claude's asking, do ports have more exotic fruits the further south you go? Um, so the port supply that's available to you, um, let's say a port that's down south, is usually owned by the, uh, I think it's f former French ports. Um, the, the fruit doesn't change. Uh, in fact, I think it's the opposite. I think... And any port that isn't really controlled by Germany, it's usually controlled by a, another country. It's just uh, aligned to Germany at that point in time. Uh, actually, has less supply, so supply should be more scarce because. Uh, you say you that, know, but dang, this is a lot of food. In Gare de Casa, uh, at least. I'll adjust that. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's so the intent is it's supposed to be uh pretty sparse like i wanted to only include some very basic food necessities um i didn't want to include advanced torpedo types um like yeah so th it requires some adjustments there um i didn't want to include ammunition for the the uh, 88 millimeter or i forget what millimeter it is the, the In deck the cannon yeah the 88 um so there's kind of some considerations i need to take there but if i figure out a way to define like specifically for this port this kind of you, you know supply that'd be really nice that'd be uh, something that'd be really cool to have well when you put it that way so when the player unlocks research such as more ammunition types when they unlock the ability to purchase high explosive ammunition for the deccan or when they unlock better torpedoes you would prefer it if only they only the OG home ports yeah had those supplies exactly um you know you're not going to see T5s shipped to Dakar or Gare de Casa or Algiers um you know why, why would Germany put the effort even though those ports were available for U-boats and German ships um you know those aren't you know places where you'd get new munitions you might be able to get some low cal small caliber stuff um but you know we're not talking about shipping torpedoes everywhere so i try and keep it to a real realistic standpoint so they they might find t1s yeah and, and i so i provide t1s um just they because... might find they might find aa ammunition they might find some deck on ammunition and they'll find fuel because diesel is diesel no matter where you go exactly and they'll find food uh, what about uh, spare parts mm. or first aid? Yeah, so those things are still available. Okay. Um, I, so this is actually, yeah, one spare part, air, eight med kits. Um, I, the intent is I don't want the player to visit one of these additional ports and be able to really get a full uh, assortment of, supply. of supplies. Okay. I want them to be able to refuel, the basics. maybe rearm a little bit, and get back onto it. You know, you you could you could cut off the supply of torpedoes entirely. That would be cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> Everybody wants to sink ships, and you know, being able to get more torpedoes to sink more ships—that's yeah. But wh what you said does make sense. That they wouldn't exactly ship a load of torpedoes to the ass end of nowhere. Specifically for U-boats. Yeah. and But, I say that but, you know, 8.8 .8 centimeter ammunition, AA gun ammunition, I could see that being stocked at some of these German ports. Especially yeah, and, and, because, you know, that ammunition is not exclusive to U-boats. Uh, a lot of surface ships used 88 and AA gun ammunition. Yeah, and I think the real consideration is going to be when 129 rolls around, um, if they have the milk cows implemented by then. Uh, yes. That will really change how the dynamic of this mod works because that opens up a lot of doors for what I can do in the game and allow a player to do in the game. Another question asked by chat is, uh, can you dock in neutral ports? Hmm. I don't. You know haven't tested that. <laughs> I haven't even tested that. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Rota is that one of the dockable ports? Do you know? Rota is a actual asset, or has an asset. Yeah, let's try it. Okay. All right, guys. Testing one hundred and one. Take notes. This is another looks like Cardiff style asset. There's enemy shipping here. That's a British tanker. I mean, historically, how would, how would this work out? You, you go to Rota, and there's some... <laughs> they did it German, in Das Boat. <laughs> there's some German, British merchant ships, and you know maybe a, a U.S. merchant ship, and a German U-boat just comes on and docks. Okay, it looks like we're not... Looks like we're not doing it. It should have... Like, it should have captured me by now, but it's not auto-docking me. So that's a no-go. And yeah, I mean, technically they did it in the movie DOS boat. They snuck into a, 
It wasn't La Spezia. It was before they reached La Spezia. They were docking at a Spanish port near Portugal before they made the the lunge through the Gibraltar Strait. And uh, they had docked under the cover of darkness with a German freighter docked in a Spanish port that was resupplying them. Which was pretty cool. But yeah, it's probably difficult to get that into game. The tankers are making an, a, making an attempt at an escape here. Some of the ships are despawning. Yeah, that's a cool little feature the devs added, I think. Uh, when you arrive to an enemy port, some of the ships will flee and do that. He's making a go of it. So, you know, to answer your question, chat, uh, cannot dock at neutral ports. Oh, cool. It was Cadiz. All right. You know what? I'll look into adding Cadiz. port of Haifa Haifa in German occupied Syria just east of Alexandria yeah I think a lot of these ports I mean when they are marked as friendly ports you know it's not so much for the historical accuracy uh, because a lot of these countries that were formerly occupied by France um weren't actually aligned with Germany uh, once France conceded uh, the, the nation over to German occupation. Um, a lot of them kind of said, hey, we're, we're going to be on our own until everything kind of plays out. So uh, it, this is really more for a playability standpoint and um, may not be a perfect representation of how the world worked. Yeah, Link, so far we're three for three, visiting all of these... Uh German-controlled ports we're able to dock at. Feels good. It feels real good. <laughs> Testing your game live. Basic T1s and T2s available here. Fuels available here. Some ammunition. Food is plentiful at these ports. I'd say UBE is in a very playable state. Uh, if you're going to test out this mod chat, and I hi highly encourage that you do because uh, the more people we have testing the mod, you know, the more Link can work on this mod and fix any bugs you encounter. Because he can't test everything all at once. We need people trying to break this mod the more you break it the more he can plug those holes yeah that's that's an absolute fact I mean I, I would say the player base that has been utilizing this mod that have been providing feedback have been such a great help to really getting the mod to where it is today um, and like you said I, I can't you know I could nowhere near test any all of the features in this mod i mean it's it's nearly impossible but with a lot of the workforce that has put in time and playing and you know testing it it's it's been great hearing some of that feedback hey erica thanks for the follow and anybody watching if you're not already uh scroll down a bit there's a link to the u-boat discord on this channel it's a great place where modders players of the game and uh, people who know a lot of history of World War II like to hang out and talk. And it's a great place to learn how to play the game if you're having any trouble. All right. Uh, any more questions, chat?
or link is there anything else you wanted to talk about no man i, I really appreciate you offering this opportunity to do this video um thank you I really i i think the community really enjoys your content i really enjoy your content um and please keep going through that i think there's a lot of mod developers out there and mods out there that really deserve more recognition and, and kind of this this type of insight that you're providing um so i really look forward to seeing more of your content and videos well hey man i appreciate that but enough about me thank you for stopping by uh this is the first time i've ever had an interview like this uh i think i think we did pretty good uh i'm setting my sights on salamander next so i can talk about his improved ballast mod and guys drum roll salamander is working on a proper functional dexa wash for you boat so i'm looking forward to that